It's what you do. Well, hello there. Today I have some black paper that I have pre-cut into the shape of butterflies. These papers have actually been sitting in my art room for years. And today is the day that I'm going to paint on them with Neon Craft Smart Paint using two different painting techniques. And I'll also be sharing a free template with you on my website that you can print and use on your own. Let's start off with my pre-cut black construction paper. Well. Technically, this is oak tag I got from the Dollar Tree, but if you only have black construction paper, that can work. My suggestion would be to just glue two pieces of construction paper together to make it a little thicker. And that's honestly only because this project probably works a little better with a thicker paper like oak tag. But yeah, if construction paper is all you got, just glue some pieces together and you should be good to go. I've taken out my tiny crafting scissors because I realized that these pre-cut butterflies that I cut a while ago have some jagged lines on them and that will just not do. We need a nice smooth curvature. Watching me do this is making me nervous. It's like I'm asking for a paper cut. As promised, here are my neon craft smart paints. I love neon colors and the best place to paint with neon paints is on a black surface. It just makes everything really pop. Oh my goodness, that is so bright, my eyes. Let's get started painting with our first technique. So the first technique that you can use when painting a butterfly is to start with the black background, obviously. Butterflies are symmetrical. Symmetrical, is that a word? Yeah, that is a word, okay. They have symmetry to them, meaning the right side matches the left side. So if you add a shape to the right side of the wing, you should add the same shape to the left side wing. These decorations, I guess you could call them, on the butterfly wings are typically surrounded in a color, usually black, and I am in this case utilizing the black background so that I don't have to go back and create black lines around all of my colors. Instead, anywhere I avoid painting defines the black lined area. This might seem like an obvious technique for painting butterflies, but I do have a second way that you can do it. And no, it's not the paint mushing technique where you put paint on one side and then mush it to the other side and say, wow, it's symmetrical. Almost like a butterfly. No, it's a different technique than that. Anyway, once I got done painting my general shapes and colors, I did have to go back and put a lot of coats of paint. And once I got everything to a place where it was no longer transparent, I started to add the details. So I added little darts, little things that look like hearts, little triangles, lines, etc. I really tried not to overthink this step. If you add a weird shaped blob to one side, add a weird shaped blob in the same spot on the other side and everything should turn out looking fine. It's not that big of a deal. No, 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 we're not doing any of this. Also worth noting, I added things like hearts, which are obviously not realistic to real butterflies, but I think we're past the point of creating a real butterfly. I have used neon rainbow colors and weird shapes that are not accurate. So yes, I've created an unrealistic looking butterfly on purpose for two reasons. The first reason is I wanted to use the neon colors. The second reason is a reason I've discussed on my channel many times. Most of you know we've been over this. Ah, I am disgusted by real butterflies. Terrified, but also disgusted. I hate their wings. I think they look gross. And the way that I'm planning on using these butterflies in particular to decorate my art room would disgust me if I made it look realistic. Like I could have made a realistic monarch butterfly, but that would probably make me terrified of my own art room on a daily basis. So I will not do that. I'm using my white Posca paint pen and adding little speckles. These ones, the bigger speckles are symmetrical, but the tiny dots are not symmetrical because that would be impossible. And now it's time for bows. My sister used these for something for my bridal shower a year ago and they are adorable. She gave them to me and I have to use them. She gets a giant bow on top of her head. This is an optional step, but to create a 3D effect, you can add a second piece of paper, bend the wings, glue the center, and then you have a little flappy wing that looks like it's going to fly away. 
I feel like it's worth noting that doing this could also be used as like a table decoration at a birthday party because it does stand up on its own. The 3D effect is why I didn't make it look like a real butterfly. That truly would have scared me. I'm using my Liquitex high gloss varnish to seal everything in and make it nice and shiny. I also decided to change the eyes from the heart eyes. Honestly, not sure if I like that better, but oh well. Ah, why did it just get dark? Oh, this is my black oak tag. I'm taking this out because I need to cut tiny little strips for the butterflies antennas. These are also a very gross part of real butterflies. They're just bleh. That's done and we're gonna move on to our second butterfly and our second painting technique. I actually might like this approach better just because with Neon Craft Smart Paint, things are transparent and it's way easier to layer the paint with this approach. This second method involves creating one giant block of color. You can do any color set you want. I decided to do a neon rainbow going from pink all the way down until purple. That just reminded me, there is a contingent of people that watch my channel that get very upset when I use pink in place of red in a rainbow. And I'm like, that is such a very specific random upsetment. Why are you guys sad? Can I just use pink instead of red? I understand technically Roy G. Biv, the R stands for red. We get it, but I like pink. So I will continue to refer to this as a version of a rainbow, even if you get sad. Pink instead of red, she's unhinged. Maniacal. My color block is done and I'm taking out this Artistro brush paint pen. Fun fact, Artistro was my first ever sponsorship on my channel. I did their paint pens and they were good, but wow, have they improved because these brush pens I recently bought, they are so opaque, look at this. Are we looking with our eyes? This is one coat. I didn't even do two coats. This just did what it had to do. And I like their paint pens too, because they offer like different colors that are kind of cool, but the brush pens, wow, magnificat. This video is literally not sponsored, so I need to stop talking about them. But if you do want to actually get the brush markers, I have 10%, so don't get it without the 10%. I have the link in my description. You can use that still. Anyway, my second approach, I kind of have skipped over, but I guess you can see what I did. I created the color block, and then I used the black brush pen to create the lines after the fact. The first approach requires you to think of both the colors and the shapes at the same time, and that's kind of confusing. I like the process of painting with this approach better because you can really focus on the colors at first, and then after that, focus on the black lines. You don't have to be like thinking of two things at once. And once I was done adding all of my black shapes and lines, I took out my white Posca paint pen, added my major dots that were actually symmetrical, and then added my tiny speckles that would be impossible to make symmetrical because they're so small. I really enjoy the step of adding all of these white speckles though because I feel like it really enhances the piece. It brings it from a baby butterfly into a real mature adult. Wait, is that ladybugs that get more dots as they get older? Do butterflies also? I don't know. There was a minor mishap here with the Liquitex because my brush pen was water-based and it kind of spread the black, but that's okay. Ah uh, yes, time for our tiny bow tie. It's so cute. I'm taking out my glue gun, just gluing that on right there. And we're taking out our second piece of paper, folding up the wings, gluing the center body only to the second piece of paper, cutting out our antennas so that we can stick them on top of the head of the butterfly. Now this little guy can finally see. I think he sees with his antennas at least, maybe. And here we have the final result of both of our butterflies. The first one is very complex to me. It looks very interesting. I enjoy it a lot. The second one is less complex, but I also like it because it looks kind of fun. It's interesting. It's got the drips. The only mistake was that the Liquitex did spread the brush paint I used, and that is a little upsetting, but mostly fine. Together, they go really well. They can stand up on a table, as I mentioned, if you want to have like a butterfly themed birthday party. And as promised on bellamina.com under the crafts tab, you can use my butterfly template to cut out the same shape that I did here and create something similar. I have hung my butterflies right above my voiceover table so I can look at these nice beauties every time I'm speaking to you. 
If you want to see more craft and DIY videos, I do have a playlist linked for that. I also have a playlist for painting on stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week for another video. Bye!